I met Brenda when I was in campus, and she was a tomboy. So she became my boy, like I would go tell her. <laughs> I'd go tell her, I've seen this chick, eh? That one I want. She was still single, but I was rioting, like most campus guys riot. Then I realized with time that Brenda was a wife material, like a whole bell or something like that. <laughs> but you see, I had told her so much about my rioting that I felt, hmm, this one I lost, so whoever marries this one will be a lucky guy. Then I was dumped. So I was single, she was single, and I realized, oh, this is probably the woman I should be following instead of those other ones I was trying to follow up. So we started dating. And along the way, I was so smitten. And a smitten man is a stupid man, by the way. You sometimes say things and you're like, did I just say that? <laughs> so there's this day, I used to work for Grapevine, some program called Grapevine. So I went to see her. I was like, let me go see this chick, then I go to my place. So I went to see her. She made tea. When you are lawyer, people are always sneaking tea, you know. <laughs> so she made me tea. And I was having that tea. I didn't plan this, by the way. But somehow I said, will you marry me? <laughs> but there was a problem. So as she was looking at me, you know, expecting I pull out some million dollar Tanzanite. I didn't even have the ring. And on top of that, I didn't even have the money. I was being paid some mediocre money, so I didn't even have. So I was like, now I need to salvage this situation. I called my boys like, hey, Victor, do you have like 3K you sambaza me, you know? I even called the one who was the brokest. I was like, you know. <laughs> eh? Throw in some hard for 500 like this, it will salvage something. I gave a wedding ring, a, a engagement ring, the following day. And she told me two things. One, you'll take me as I am. Number two, you'll support my dreams and ambitions. I was like, fine. I was trying to be a different man, you know. <laughs> it went well, and on 16th April 2011, a man of God said, I now pronounce you as it goes, yes. Then I learned very fast in the marriage that she said I should take her as she was because she has OCD. She has very severe OCD. <laughs> and I'm very poor even at just putting socks, you know, in the dirty laundry basket. Don't even talk about making the bed. I've, I struggle to this day, and I get quarreled so many times. People who have OCD partners have trouble, by the way. <laughs> you should pray for them. <laughs> Number two, she had always wanted to work for this particular airline that is not in Kenya. So as I was telling her, ah, we'll do this, you know. Deep down, I was like, no, she's not going anywhere. She's just becoming successful here. She's just talking. And God has a weird sense of humor, by the way. <laughs> For three years, it was just the two of us. We didn't have a kid. Until in 2014, when, you know, and we had a baby, then the company that had kept her all those years gave her that offer for a job. She told me, no, this one, I won't even take this job. I told her, no, you, you've looked for this job for so long that turning it down, even God will not be happy by the way. God doesn't give people these chances <laughs> that easily. She told me, no, I, I don't think it's a good idea because of the baby. I told her, but I'm here. I am a parent as well. So I told her, let me consult. You know, ask a few. I talked to a man of God here, a friend there, a neighbor here, a parent here. And you know that, that emoji that usually does this, that emoji. <laughs> Everybody is like, you said what? <laughs> Brenda has gotten a job. She's going with the baby. No, I'm keeping the baby. 
You've made so many mistakes in life, but this one, this is the mother. You, you are just finished. <laughs> but you see, I came back home and I asked myself, okay, this guy's trying to tell me these things. Do they know how much I crowdfunded like a startup to get even a, a ring for this woman? <laughs> I was like, no. I'll do what I think is right for this family. Oh, that's my son making that noise, by the way. He's a very noisy boy. <laughs> so I kept quiet. Then I told Brent, I've asked by the way, and guys are like, you guys are young, you should just enjoy your life. But you see, I was lying, because if I said guys are not for this idea, she would be like, okay, let's throw it out. And preparation started far to move out of the country. And I was helping, you know, do the paperwork, everything. I kept asking myself, you proposed without a plan. <laughs> now you are telling her to go and you don't even have experience, nothing. But you see, a man always tries to look, eh? everything is okay, but deep down here you are crashing, you are like a very big mess. I remember the day before she left, Brenda wept, like she wept that night. And in the morning I took her to the airport. Then we just held on to each other for like five minutes and didn't say a word. It was like that silence that, they call it silence of the, the lambs, I think, something like that. <laughs> she left. So I came back home now to a baby who was used to seeing a dad and a mom now having to contend with this 24 hours a day. A baby who didn't know how to speak because he was still too young. A baby who was still breastfeeding. And you can see there is very little, you know. <laughs> yeah. So th there are times he would cry and I try everything. You know, like a baby cries and you don't know is it hunger? Is it like maybe he has, he has a problem in the stomach and you are washing him. You see, you are doing two different things. For, so you're not solving the problem. So he cries more. And I would get so frustrated. Like I would literally hold on to sanity. I would sometimes feel like just putting him there, moving a few steps back and doing, you know, that rugby conversion kick, the one you. <laughs> but then I was like, this is my firstborn, this is my, my guy, you know. The, the other side, Brenda was not having a very good time, by the way, because the same milk I was struggling to, to get for this boy, <laughs> she was expressing and pouring it away. There are times she would call and just break down on that video call. She says nothing, like she just cries. And I have to look composed for her, because if you are the support system and you crash, you know, everything just goes away. <laughs> then, coincidentally, every time my mom would call me, she would find, my mom was among those who said, hey, no, this idea of her going, forget it, you see, you know. So my mom would call and find the boy crying. <laughs> every time. And she'd be like, I told you you did not listen. What she was doing, she was basically poking, you know, poking holes into a wounded soul. And I would be like, I would get so annoyed, and I would quarrel my mom. I would quarrel that woman. Because why is she questioning my decision? Okay, I've goofed, yes, but I've goofed. <laughs> let, let me leave you that goof. You don't have to keep poking, reminding me I goofed. So I would quarrel and tell her, do not call me again. I'm okay. The following morning, she calls. <laughs> and we quarrel again. So in the midst of that, you know, I'm trying to balance Brenda's emotions, this baby who I don't know what's happening because I've never been a parent. Friends telling me, hey, Hill, if my parent, if my, my wife leaves even to just go work in Uganda, I'm divorcing her. You, you have a very strong. <laughs> Someone mentioned, Hill, there's this group on Facebook. It's a support group for mothers. <laughs> <laughs> it is called Kilimani Moms Nairobi.
I was told those women are so experienced. Just type the question, the answers will come. I sent a request with my full names, not a pseudo account. Hillary Lisimba Ambani. I was approved by they somehow. <laughs> but that person did not mention one thing. Now that group is very harsh to men. <laughs> In my naivety, I would go there and type, my baby is behaving like this. My post would get like 3,000 comments. 2,990 were insults. Give this guy a bra. This guy needs uh, pads. And you see, I have to read everything because there's an answer somewhere that I don't know where it is. <laughs> there are a few women who would kind of overlook that I was a man and answer. But those who would tell me things, eh, big words about how a man is snitching on women, how a man... Eh, they, I would bet they have been wished Happy Mother's Day so many times by those women. <laughs> I look at life those days. Okay, it's been now, this is the fifth year she's been away. I look at life now and I see. The, the match we went against the grain, because society expects you, you know, you get married, have this baby, come in the evening, one holds the other hand, this one you hold, then you keep swinging. You know, that's how, that's how society expects you to be married. <laughs> then you are here, you are a man, you said, let my wife follow the dream, I will take care of the baby. Then society sees you like, you are not really doing what's okay. But you see, Society does not really know what you go through when you found. Like, no one knows what I saw in that tomboy. That's my tomboy, you get. Yeah, when I picked her, and she's now a swan, she's no longer a tomboy, by the way. When I, when I went through all that I've gone through with her, no one is, was ever there to see us go through all those years. But now, when you make a decision, everybody is trying to tell you what to do about your marriage. But that's not a bad thing because if you're a man, you can easily get your woman, then you do the correct thing. Forget this one. That, 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 I've goofed. That's Hillary's marriage. Let him goof in that marriage. You do your thing with whoever you have. My mom still quarrels sometimes, but, but she's learned to, because the boy has grown up now. The boy talks. Now we, we can communicate. They video call, and it's no longer someone shedding tears and uh, one of them looking at the other like, what's happening? The sacrifice is paying very well. I could say we are doing much better than you are. And I see that, and what comes to my mind is the fact that I think the most important thing that this whole scenario gave me was one, a front row seat into parenting, like I would never have managed if I was in a conventional marriage with, you know, my wife there and we are raising a baby. Because I can change that pass with my hands closed, with my eyes closed. I have slept in wards with women. <laughs> Men hardly sleep in wards, by the way. But I've slept with my kid in that ward. I have known how much, how difficult it is to be a mother. Like, it's, it's, parenting is hard from that perspective. Women never really get that chance, but I've seen life in a different angle. <laughs> <laughs> but I've also learned discipline, because I have to wake up, prepare this boy for school, go do my errands, and be back in time to pick him, wash him, feed him, then we do whatever assignment, and still do that the following day. I think if I had Brenda around doing such things, I would be out there, you know, partying and yeah, 
getting into getting arrested and stuff like that. <laughs> but it's, it's given me this respect for Brenda because not so many women would do such a bold move, like going against the grain in such a situation, especially for a kid who is still breastfeeding. But the bottom line is, I think love is strong. Like it gives you this strength to maneuver so many things you would not have managed on your own. Love is sacrifice. Even if it means, you know, sacrificing to read 3,000 insults for one answer, <laughs> that is love. But the most important bit is knowing that the most important individual in that relationship is sometimes not you, it's the other person. Mm -hmm.